friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and this is the third edition of I Dream of Dahlias. Remember these? And these? <sighs> 2021 was the Dahlia year I've been dreaming about for four seasons now. We had a beautiful amount of rain. I only had to water these twice. We had beautiful conditions for Dahlias and they were showing off. So what do I have planned for 2022? Of course, I have all of those tubers from this season saved in the garage. They're doing great. I just checked on them. They're all firm, no signs of disease, super happy with how they're storing this year. So if you're interested in seeing the dahlias that I grew last year that I'm carrying over into 2022, I have a dahlia tour video that I'll, that I'll link up above. Uh, but these are the ones that I purchased. New for 2022. So I'm splitting this video into two parts. The first section, I'll talk about the dahlias that I ordered wholesale. That means I'm getting a large amount of each variety. And then I'll talk about the tubers that I bought individually from Swan Island Dahlias. They're the largest dahlia farm in America and they offered me a coupon code for you guys. So stay tuned, I'll have all that in just a couple minutes. First though, the wholesale. So there's a difference between buying wholesale and then buying retail. When I'm buying wholesale, I'm buying large quantities of dahlias at a lower price. So I'm getting 25 of each variety and this year I ordered 10 of those. Now there are thousands literally thousands of dahlia varieties. So how did I choose? Well, I really thought about what I was lacking last year when it came to color. And the first color that popped in my mind was yellow. I was missing a yellow dahlia. So I definitely started with that. American Sun, this is the first variety. It's described as a great cut flower with a six inch bloom. Now sometimes when blooms get larger, they don't really make a great cut flower. They don't last as long in the vase, but this one is said to be a great cut flower. So I'm excited about that. But I definitely was missing this shade when it came to fall because my dahlias really aren't ready until August, September, you know, when people are thinking about those fall colors. So yellow was something I wanted to add to my lineup. The next one in the yellow line is called Buttercup. Now this is a more pale yellow. You can definitely see the difference here. Ball dahlias are my favorite though, and the soft yellow tones of this variety caught my eye for sure. Sticking with the yellow theme, I have a smaller one called Golden Scepter, and I just love how deep and rich the color is in the center and how it fades as the petals go away from the center. Uh, yummy! Okay, so from yellow to orange, the majority of my dahlias are going strong when everyone's ready for fall, like I said. So naturally, I wanted to up my orange game this season. I grew a lot of Cornell bronze last year, which is technically orange, but really it's more of like a like an apricot creamy, rust color. So I wanted to get more orange varieties in there. The first one I have on my list though is called Jumanda. Now Jumanda, I'm told can look a lot like Cornell bronze. I'm excited to grow them side by side and compare the difference. I think this one might be a little bit on the darker side. I remember the first time I ever saw a Jomanda Dahlia was from my friend Gina. I was buying some flowers from my flower friend Gina and she brought me a bucket of these Jomanda and I just remember falling in love with them instantly. Been wanting to get that one here on the farm so I got it. They're just so rich and uh, I'm excited to see the difference between the Jamanda and the Cornell Bronze. So another orange edition is called Orange Pico. This one literally took my breath away. <laughs> I love the changes in shades throughout each petal. It's so magical with shades of apricot and deep orange. I cannot wait. A lighter shade in the orangey peach family is actually Peaches, it's called Peaches. This is a highly sought after variety. There's also one called Peaches and Cream. There is some debate on whether or not they are the same. I've had people buy both and grow them and have them look identical. And I've had people say that, no, they actually are different. So we'll have to see. I sense a theme here because here is another creamy, delicious orange shade, Joey Linda. Again, ball dahlias are my favorite. I think the texture is just so fun to look at and to touch. Touching dahlias are it's kind of like a little fetish, a dahlia fetish. So from Joey Linda to Linda's baby, literally, it's called Linda's baby. I don't think I need to say much about this one. Just breathe her in. She's fantastic, yes. Okay, so I'm really concerned about the next one actually coming to my farm because I feel like I've been cursed when it comes to breakout. I love the breakout dahlia. I grew it in 2020. 
I ended up lifting the tubers at the end of the year to find them diseased, so I had to toss them all out. And last year, I ordered 25 as a wholesale, and I had my order canceled at the last minute in the spring. So cross your fingers, that breakout is actually going to make it to the farm this year. It's just so romantic and beautiful. I love this dahlia. I know Erin from The Impatient Gardener also loved this dahlia. And Laura from How's It Growing New Jersey actually just posted a picture of breakout on her Instagram this morning. So I really, really love this one. And finally, in the wholesale list, we have White Wizard. Now this might be a nod to Gandalf, Mm, run you fools, but perhaps not. So this is said to be similar in appearance to the Wizard of Oz dahlia with its lovely white and pink hues. So those are the dahlias that I've ordered in large quantities, but I still wanted to grow individual colors. I realized this past year when I grew a lot of dahlias that were just different, I had a whole row of, of just individual tubers that brought me so much joy, not, not so much like on the farm end, but just visually for me. I was like, you know what? I love being surrounded by these, let alone cutting and selling them. I love that they're just there. So I wanted to have a more, a bigger variety of the ones that were just there. And if they produce well, they produce well. I'm not counting on these ones to bring me in farm income. I'm counting on these ones to bring me mental health income. And that's just as important. That doesn't mean, however, that I won't cut them and use them in arrangements, but I obviously am not gonna have the quantities of each one of these since I ordered a single tuber of each to cut them in any sort of uh, a large amount. So these are just absolutely gorgeous and they're all from Swan Island Dahlias. So I reached out to Swan Island Dahlias and I said, hey guys, I'm, I'm doing this video. Would you like to offer my viewers a coupon code? I'd love to share that. And they were like, Absolutely. So they're offering you guys $5 off a $50 purchase. I have to warn you, a lot of varieties are sold out already, including some of the ones that I'm going to be telling you about on this list. And the code is SIDFHF22. So it's Swan Island Dahlia's SID Flower Hill Farm FHF22. This coupon code is valid for online purchases only and it expires on February 28th. So it's good for $5 off a $50 purchase, online sales only, expires February 28th. So if you want to get your orders in, you have to do it over the next month. So anyway, thank you Swan Island Dahlias for offering that to you guys. All of that information is also in the description below. So if I was talking too fast, you'll find it there. But this list is long, so I'm just going to read through it and put the pictures on the screen. We have .com. Mai Tai and Appealing. Now, a couple of these are actually gonna be growing at my mother's house because I bought her some dahlias for Christmas. She's gonna be growing them in pots on her back porch. We have Peaches and Dreams, which, ooh, super delicious. Bahama Mama, cause my mama needs Bahama Mama, so she's getting one of these. And Summer's End, I also got a Bahama Mama for myself. <laughs> so, it'll be growing here as well. We have Little Scotty, Cocoa Puff, and Crossfield Ebony. Now these are pom-pom dahlias. They're small ball dahlias, and they're only about two inches in diameter, and I am excited to bring a lot of these to the farm this year because I just think they're the perfect little touch of color, and I just love the ball dahlias. So the fact that they come in miniature sizes pleases me. Oh look, more pom-poms. zippity doo da Tiny Treasure, and Nettie. We have Touche, Ivanetti, and perhaps the one I'm most excited about. It's called Enchantress, and I am enchanted. Look at those magenta tips and the white underbelly. Oh, I am, like, this is my Michaela Miranda from last year. Enchantress is it. This is the one that I'm so excited about. I don't know. It's something about the variations, right? I don't know. I just love it. So Enchantress, I'm excited for you. Okay, coming up on the next page, we have Sunkissed, beautiful pale yellow. Oh, <laughs> I say beautiful right next to Blutiful. Blutiful is this just uh, lavender, lush deliciousness. I'm so excited about it. And then we have Midnight Moon that is just beautiful white with pink creamy edges. Moving on, we have Oregon Rain, Brookside Sherry. Look at those cactus petals, I love it. And then candlelight, candlelight. Look at how much this literally looks like a candlelight. I love it. La Luna, Honeymoon, Croydon Masterpiece. 
you'll notice that some of these are actually like dinner plate size because these are just, you know, just to look pretty. Ooh, we have Iceberg, Sherwood's Peach, and Razzmatazz. Chewy, Foxy Lady, and Rebecca Lynn is not normally a color I go for. If you recall earlier this spring, I had a little bit of a, an issue with a pink tulip that I was growing. I think they were called like pretty princess tulips. I learned to love them because tucked into an arrangement, they were the perfect pop of pink. And I think that's what Rebecca Lynn is gonna do for me as well. So check out my Halloween theme. Again, my dahlias are not ripening and ready to harvest until August. And at that point, people are looking towards those more fall colors. So totally tangerine, lights out, swans, sunset. I'm excited about these. Another cactus variety in Miss Rose Fletcher. And then we have one, I think it's a Coralette. The Cherubino, it's so beautiful. One of my favorite arrangements always have these colorettes in them because they just pop. And you can't really tell, is that a Cosmo? Is that a Dahlia? What is that? It's really beautiful. And then My Forever is something that I've been wanting to try for a couple of years and I have friends who grow it and love it. So My Forever is coming home with me. The orange shades continue with Good Day, which has a beautiful burgundy purple undertone, Mary Jo, which is more of a creamy apricot. I also have a cousin named Mary Jo, so that was obvious. And then Deputy Bob. I just like the name, Deputy Bob. Maui, September Morn, same color tones going on here, really liking them both. And then Little Blessings, I don't know, I really like the way this has the open center, it was like the pop of green in the open center, and then the double petals all around. Uh, really, really liking that one as well. And that's a wrap on the dahlias that I ordered for 2022. I will say, however, I did get a certain number of free dahlias, seven or eight, I think. Uh, when you spend X amount of dollars with Swan Island, you get a free tuber. I think I, think I ended up spending about $400, and that was a gift to myself. I had done a couple of extra freelance jobs, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy myself the dahlias that I wanna grow. So I'm really excited about the dahlias. If they're even half of what they were in 2021, I won't be disappointed. So tell me in the comments below, what dahlia are you guys most excited about? Name it, drop it, name drop right here. Anyway, thanks for sticking around guys and we'll see you soon.